Yo, what up? How's it going? Welcome back. In today's video, I will be telling you guys my top three strategies for climbing in early season and specifically for set 6.5. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Don't worry about the gameplay in the background. It's just some stuff I'm throwing on the screen. It's just a random bot of mine. So with that out of the way, let's get right into it. Okay, so early season, early season, guys. Uh, early season. I will be completely transparent. I'm not a, the best early season player. Now, that doesn't mean I'm bad. I'm still like rank, I'm still like top 250 the entire time, which is Challenger Elo. It's just, I'm not one of those people who make one of those massive climbs and I'm like, you know, hit Challenger in three days. I normally just hang out and master. I'm still like in Challenger Elo, still playing against those players. Um, but I'm not someone who like prioritizes making a big LP push. So I just want to say that flat out straightforward because uh, I know a lot of you guys will hear me say I'm a bad early season player, but I'm still better than everyone, but like about 200 players. So uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, I just wanted to put that out there. All right, the first thing we're gonna talk about is one tricking or one trick-ish. And this is really the primary strategy for gaining LP early season. Like this is the end all be all for the most part, best way to climb, um, especially for lower tiered players. Um, it can be a little bit different once you are in Challenger Elo and the and people start to learn throughout the first patch even the first patch that one tricking strategy um may not even be the best thing by the end of the first patch but in lower elos 100 percent um and in higher elos this is this is still really great um happens all the time so what do we do in this uh one trick scenario and i say one trick ish this strategy is primarily my climbing strategy in general um i don't one trick ever but i will like one trick ish meaning i have a comp that i specialize in or an area that I specialize in that I am very proficient at, very good, better than most players at this particular style. Um, but it doesn't mean I don't play other things. It's just when I get that style, I know that I can reliably top for the game. So I, I, I focus most of my energy towards one style, one comp, or one tree, or, or one way of playing. And then the games where I'm not allowed to play that way, I view those as learning experiences. Um, but I know when I get my one my one trick or or my build tree, I can reliably top four. So it's just really specialization. So yeah, rather than focusing on learning everything, just get strong at a particular comp style or a tree um, like AD or AP. So what I mean by that example, like either get, get really good at like bow start, sword start, glove start, like, you know, going the AD tree, get really good at that tree or get really good at going the AP tree or develop maybe a reroll style. Maybe you're like, all right, I'm gonna play reroll hex techs and reroll innovators, and that's gonna be my style. I'm gonna start chain over game, I'm gonna lock it stack, and I'm going to do that style. And if that works for you, then you just keep it going until it doesn't work for you. So that's that's the idea. So the point is just narrow down the variables in your games so that you can play at a higher level of proficiency than everyone else. Because all the players who are trying to, you know, feel it, feel it out, learn everything, um, learn how to play every, every comp they are going to be at a lower proficiency level at everything versus you at this one thing like they might be better they might be slightly better than you at all of the comps but you are way better than them at like three of the comps or something like that you know what i mean like they're slightly better than you at all the other ones but you're way better at the other players at three of the comps or one of the comps two of the comps or maybe you're just really proficient at playing ad you know what i mean so that's the idea that is the idea because people are really bad early set. So just abuse that people are going to be worse at the game. And the way you abuse that is by just getting good at one style, just lower the variables for yourself because everyone's playing with a lot of new information. So what are the pros of this? The pros are you gain a lot of LP really fast and it's pretty easy. If you, if you do narrow down a good strategy, it's effective for you and you stick with it, you will gain a lot of LP very fast. Another good, uh, another good pros of this is you will in a way get better practice because you are going to be playing against better players presumably or other players who are doing this type of strategy who are abusing meta so you will get um, more difficult practice because your lp will be higher and so you'll either be playing against better players or players who are also abusing an lp inflating strategy so um so that that's still just good practice because that player is playing something that is very strong in the meta and you're getting practice against that you see what i'm saying so in a way you can get uh better better um you know better practice you know it sounds counterintuitive even though, because you're kind of one trick and you get better practice but anyways um but and the other thing is it's good for your stats if you care about your stats i there's nothing that i care about less in tft than my statistics um it is cool to look at, at the end of the year i just shared it on the youtube if you guys want to check it out my stats 
Um, it's cool to look at, uh, but you know, for me, it's not very important, but if it's important for you, then hey, you're gonna have some good sets. You're gonna have a lot of first places, uh, but you probably will have a lot of eighth places as well because you'll be you know, kind of forcing a little bit. Um, but you know, you can have a lot of good uh, first place stats and very good early season stats if you like that. The cons are you can get patched out. So if you really over invest in this style and then the next patch to the style that you over invested in gets, gets nerfed, um, you will have poor patch agility is what I call it. I, I, don't, I can't really think of a better word, but your agility from patch to patch will not be very good. Um, and you'll have to kind of relearn the game on the next patch. So that kind of sucks. But maybe you can learn a lot of that stuff while you're making your climb too. It's it's not it doesn't happen every time. But the other thing is it inflates your elo. Doesn't necessarily mean it will, but if you're a lower ranked player, let's say you're like a platinum player and you really go for an early season grind, um, like you are a platinum player, and your games are all diamond master and grandmaster because you have abused an LP inflating strategy or something like that, um, your LP will be inflated. And that can be a good or a bad thing. It can be a good thing because you can play against, uh, you know, better players. You can get better practice in that way. So you're like, oh yeah, I'm playing against players who I know are better than me because I am this ranked player and I, I'm, I'm, I'm two tiers below these players. And so I'm going to get exposure to this and practice. And that can be a really great experience that can really set you up um, and really like let kind of, you know, give yourself kind of a ranking in your mind about how, how good you are at the game, what you need to learn. I'd say one of the biggest experiences that has helped me grow as a player was playing in a tournament versus high challenger players when I was a master or low GM player. I, was, I mean, I was a straight master player and that playing in those games and getting destroyed showed me how much I have left to, how much I have left to grow. And that really inspired me. And, and that's why I, uh, I am a re reliably a challenger player every set now is because I had that exposure. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but um, it can be bad because when you inflate your EWO, you can get a lot of anxiety about playing. You, you may wanna like really hold on to your rank, like I, I'm a, I'm a master player, I promise. I promise I'm a master player. And like really in reality, you just don't play um, because your one trick got banned out or whatever. So um, it can create a lot of bad situations inflating your EWO, but not necessarily always a bad thing, but it's something to keep, keep, uh, keep in mind um, if you inflate your EWO early season. Um, and the other thing is your LP will look kind of like a stock market. Same thing with kind of like patch agility. If you get really good at one style and then you're not able to adapt the next patch, um, it, it can make your LP go up and down. If you're if you're continuing to play and you're and you're not um, trying to like hold on to your rank and you're continuing to play and try to get better, uh, your LP will kind of look like a stock market. The other thing is if you only get good at that one style and that style doesn't get patched out and you stick with it and you maintain this one trick style for a long time. Uh, then your LP will your LP will look like a stock market because you can only win games when you get your particular style because again your LP is inflated because you're playing against player later in the season being a one trick is not a super viable strategy for the most part so that's how that can be bad all right the next thing is the long con now before we get into the long con I will say the one trick or one trick ish style is the best one to gain LP if you're purely looking for your LP to go up. That is the best one of the three things I'm gonna talk about 100%. And that is actually, when I wanna make a big LP push, I do this. Doesn't necessarily mean I do this at the beginning of set or I one trick anything like that. I much prefer to learn the entire game and then decide on a style that I wanna to choose to climb on a particular patch. That's usually how I do it. Um, but you know, a lot of people would choose to do it the, do it this way where you, you climb at the beginning of set and just worry about the problems later. And the next thing is the long con. Now the long con, is primarily the thing that I do at the beginning of sets. This is why I say I'm a poor beginning of set player because I play for the long con. I play to learn a lot, learn as much as I can to first patch and save my mental because the devs are very bad at releasing a finished product. Um, you know, whether that's their fault or whatever, I think it's difficult for them, whatever. But the fact of the matter remains, the game gets released in a poor state most of the time. So just to save mental, I do the long con. So what is the long con? The long con is you just practice everything and focus on knowledge and improvement and just enjoyment of the game. And you don't, don't really care about your LP that much. Like I'm trying to win the games. I'm actively trying to win. I'm actively trying to make good decisions, but, I'm, but my mental state is not tethered to whether my LP goes up or not. Cause I look at every single game as a learning experience. Um, so that can be a strategy for you as well. On 0.5 sets, I usually don't do this strategy. I, I do a mixture of the long con and one trickish. I do act, really actively try to climb on mid sets because mid sets are usually a lot better balanced and a lot better released than a regular like, you know, 0 0.0 set. Um, so I do a mixture of both of these. But anyways, point is um, you focus on knowledge and improvement 
so that you don't crash your LP on the second patch. Because as I said, if you do the first strategy, you inflate your LP by abusing a certain uh, build or a certain tree that is really good on that patch. Um, and then it gets patched out. And now you're playing against players who are better than you. And the, and the, the comp or the style that got you to that level is no longer viable. And, and your LP will just crash like a stock market. Um, so in the long con, your LP doesn't crash because you are just making a slow climb and slowly just like learning how to utilize all the champions and stuff like that doing this uh we are playing to spike our lp on either second or third patch so you can you, you can switch from this like improvement mindset into a i'm going to grind and climb my lp um at any time at any time you can choose to do the second or third patch uh so whenever i do this at the beginning of a set i beginning of the set i try to learn try to do my best and usually by third patch i try to make a huge lp push and push for challenger so and stuff like that so you can utilize that in your own gameplay so the pros of this pros of doing this strategy is it saves your mental so as i said beginning of the sets are released in a terrible state uh you know if you're tied to your lp going up and you know something bad happens in your game you get unlucky for a few games in a row it can just be really hard on your mental if you don't have this like growth and learning mindset if you have this mindset that you want you just want to see your lp go up um, I, I found it can be very damaging to your mental and like, I mean, I'm saying whenever I try to make um, a big climb and I'm like trying to one trick or something like that at the beginning of this, this is why I don't do this at the beginning of set is like, it, it'll completely turn me off from the game, get me depressed, burn me out. I'm like, man, this is like my life. I, I, I play TFT for a living and I'm, I'm over here stuck in master, you know, uh, it, it gets different for everybody, of course, but like, that's why I don't try to early season climb in a 0, 0.0 set anymore because it was very damaging to my mental. So doing this saves your mental a lot. Um, it gives you better patch agility, which I'm just using that to describe. You don't get patched out as often. You know, a lot of players, you, you probably have heard a lot of players will get patched out. Like there's a player, I'll just, you know, I'll call him out. There's a player named Cled Bundy. You know, he climbed to rank one playing, abusing dark blue buff LeBlanc in set five, right? And, you know, good on him. He loves playing assassins player, not hating. That's all it is. But, but he is clearly like a low challenger, high GM player who was able to hit rank one, um, or maybe he was rank two or whatever. No, he was rank one for a while. And he still plays, and he only plays assassins, and he just loves doing that. Um, but he doesn't have very good patch agility, right? Um, but, you know, that's up to him. He just enjoys playing assassins. You have a much smoother climb. Your your LP will look a lot more like this when it's going up, rather than like, woo, 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 woo. Better on mental, of course. Um, and also, players typically try a lot harder on first patch, even though first patch is kind of weird and, and uh you know not very balanced most of the time uh players typically try a lot harder despite the players playing worse everyone is actively trying to make better decisions while they're playing where so, where when you get to second or third patch a lot of players will have relaxed and they have switched from this and they've done it in reverse from you they instead of them trying to gain strictly gain lp they're trying to get better and learn at the game this is not every player but a lot of players who were trying to grind for lp on first patch will will transition because because they're getting patched out will start to transition to learning the game a little bit more and trying to branch out so experimenting if you will so a uh, second patch and third patch is much more conducive for easier climbing um just based off of how how many risks players are taking and stuff like that so um cons the cons are you have lower quality op opponents on your first patch and stuff like that uh play the players you're going to be playing against are going to be lower uh either lower skilled than if you inflated your elo right because they're lower rank they're either going to be lower skilled or they're going to be um or they're, or they're or they're doing what you're doing and they're trying to feel everything out and so you're not going to feel like the pressure of a game as much as a player who inflated their elo into an elo where there's better players or players who are really 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 trying doing whatever they can to gain lp um so you will get slightly you know lower quality practice in, in that way you know what i mean um your lp will be lower obviously that sucks so if you don't like your lp being low um then that sucks um and also your stats won't be that good because since since you are playing the first patch and you're playing with first patch was in with intention to like you know test things feel things out stuff like that if you're if you're playing with that intention then your stats are just gonna be worse you're gonna lose more games um you're gonna have a lower top four rate than players who are strictly trying to win their games and don't care about improvement at all they just want to see their lp go up so your stats will be worse if you care about those things again you know a lot of players don't care about those but a lot of people do that is the long con um and this is the strategy i always implement at a point zero set 
Um, and then 0.5 sets, I usually do a mixture of this and the one trick-ish style. Uh, just to say mental, I like to gain a lot of LP because I feel like I do know most of the game going into a 0.5 set. Uh, so I don't need to test as much, but I still want to say mental. So I don't, I don't mentally tie myself to my LP. So that's why I say it's a mixture of both. Despite me really, I, I do really try to grind early, early set. Okay, the third strategy, if you can even consider that this is a strategy, but it's kind of, it's it's weird because it's the watch and wait. You don't play. You simply do not play the game or you play on an alternate account and you just don't play first batch. Um, a lot of people do this. I don't subscribe to this idea because I play this game for a living. I play this game all the time. I need to be in the, in the game. I need to know how everything feels, if I'm gonna make videos, if I'm gonna teach people. Um, I need to be out there taking the risk, but you don't, you, you don't have to do that. If you want to save mental, if you don't, if, if you want to let other people figure stuff out, if you want to have really good stats on your account, you do not have to play the first patch guys. The first patch is not fun. <laughs> I mean, it's fun, but it's like the game is like, you know, it can be a very upsetting to play. So, um, watch and wait, rather than play the first patch, you watch and maybe play on a Smurf account or something. And you plan just like the second strategy, you plan to spike on second or third patch um so what are the pros of this the pros are you save your mental quite a bit because you are not even playing the game so you'll save your mental quite a bit you let other players risk their lp on the meta so those players who are doing the long con strategy the second strategy they are out there testing they're out there figuring stuff out they're they're figuring out how to optimize certain units and the players who are one tricking are figuring out how to optimize individual comps and stuff like that so you can just let all those people do all the figuring out um you in and when you're doing this you are watching people play you are actively involved but you are just not playing the game and risking your own lp yourself um it saves you from bad habits so you could you could like misutilize a unit the entire set because you built a really bad habit of how you play them so you could like misutilize like an oriana or something like that um at the beginning of a set and or misutilize a gen and, and build him a certain way and just like really build a bad habit of, of building a certain item tree and something like that. Whereas you can never learn those bad habits by just watching a better player optimize that composition and you just never learn that negative information. So that can be a very good thing. You will have a sharp climb since you are learning the game without playing, presumably whenever you go to play, you're gonna be playing against players who are lower skilled than you because the players who were at your skill played on first patch. So they're, um, Play it on first patch so they have grown their rank from the rank reset and climbed some MMR. So you're presumably playing against worse players and um, and you will have spent that time learning rather than testing anything. So your climb will be a lot sharper because instead of having to learn how to play Rek'Sai and, and test a couple different Rek'Sai builds, builds, you already watched like Robin Songs or somebody, learn the build, learn how to optimize the comp, and now you are playing that comp at an optimal level without ever practicing it before in your life. So you'll have a much sharper climb if you like just looking at that and that makes you feel good. And um, you know, you know, it does feel good to just climb really fast. Um, players try harder on the first patch. So same idea as the other one, you'll be playing on a later patch where players presumably will not be trying as hard because people really, really, really try hard on first patch, but try a little bit less hard on second and third patch. Obviously not everyone, um, but there'll be a lot of players who will try to like experiment and stuff a little bit more on second and third patch than first patch. All right, the cons are you have no LP gain. <laughs> Your LP is stagnant um, and you can feel kind of left out, you know, uh, because you're not playing the game everyone else is and your LP is low. That can feel pretty bad. But if you have the mental fortitude to uh, not care about those things, and can just move on and can try to um and just grind on second and third patch then yeah uh then then that's not too bad um if you feel left out and have no op gain the other thing this is really the the worst part of this strategy is you have no feel for the game um now it's not very difficult to gain a feel for the game what i mean like you don't know what it's like to have to make these decisions in these certain scenarios in the game because watching someone play and playing a game is very different um, I always recommend you, everyone to watch someone else play um, if they can their free time. I think it's one of the most effective ways to learn the game is to watch someone without having the stress of the game. But also you need to play the game to feel the stress of the game, you know, or you'll just be a backseat dandy who uh, tries to make decisions for people without ever knowing why they even make those decisions because you don't know what it feels like to be in their situation. So that is the downside is you don't get a feel. But I do think it's very easy to gain a feel for the game. You just have to grind really hard um, for a few days on a patch and you will you will be comfortable on the patch, in my opinion. But 
again, it can be a pretty big downside, not having that, not gaining that feel naturally over time. Um, but you know, you can take it or leave it, you know, you don't get a feel, but you get to gain LP really fast. Um, because you get this infinite knowledge of just watching a bunch of different people play and not having to test it yourself. So it's just whatever you want. So in synopsis, guys, if you want to gain a lot of LP right, right out the gate, I would recommend either one tricking or getting good at like AD or AP or getting good at a particular reroll strat or, you know, you just abuse a strategy that that one works in the meta and two is works for you and you enjoy playing it or something. You, maybe that's not important to you. It's usually important to me that I enjoy playing the comp. Um, l the long con, that's really if you're trying to climb the second or third patch and you're just like, you know, you're really playing, playing it out so that you can spend you can spike later and you're just trying to grow your wealth of knowledge saves a lot of mental and then the last one saves the most mental um you just don't play the game you learn how to optimize a lot of comps and then you just get a feel for the game and make a big climb on patch two or patch three anyways guys that's it if you guys want more of me i post at twitter.com slash agent tft every day uh and i stream at twitch.tv slash agent tft have a new fiber line being installed in two days so i'll be back to streaming as soon as that fiber internet gets installed because I have been getting turbo fisted by my current internet service provider, um, despite me buying the highest package made for people who do jobs like me, um, it does not work. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys like the video, please like the video. Sorry, I, it's all I think about is my internet. Um, it's destroying everything, <laughs> but we're getting it fixed. Uh, anyways, if you guys want, uh, yeah, I already said the thing. If you guys want to like the video, it actually helps me out tremendously. And uh, yeah, I just pre I appreciate everybody who, who came out today and, and clicked on the video and, uh, and, and made it this far. I appreciate all of you. So I just, I just hope you have a good night. Hope you have a good day. And wherever you are, I just hope you're doing well. See you guys. Bye.